Hey, this is Leslie with Comfortable Shoes Studio, and this is Art Journaling number 16, Resists and Boss Lines with the Jelly Plate. So in this video, I um, did this work in my work studio, um, but not during work hours. So here I'm using a Crayola crayon to make some random marks on just regular cheap um, photocopy paper or what you might put in your home printer. It's not great stuff, it's not expensive stuff, it just does a job. So it's a pretty absorbent paper which you want for this technique. Um, so the idea behind it is that the wax doesn't stick well to the acrylic paints and the uh, acrylic sticks to the paper pretty well, leaving behind a impression of the lines that you drew with your crayons. Now, I will tell you up front, I did not have great success with this particular technique uh, in the work studio. I have done this at home before, and it worked pretty well. Um, but I will say, doing it with Crayola crayons might not be the best because they are um, may, they're washable. So, you know, if you've got a kid that scribbles on the wall, um, you can wash them off. And I think that inhibits their resistant quality. So I did pick up some very inexpensive Wally World uh, pen and gear crayons so that I can try this technique again. Now the other thing, I'm not gonna talk through this entire video. This video is about an hour and a half's worth of um, jelly printing condensed down to about 25 minutes. I did trim a lot out of it and I did speed up a lot of this. Um, so this, I am using portfolio oil pastels, which as you know, are water soluble, which does cause problems later. I don't know if I show the problems. I did have some problems getting a good pull with these, but I did end up with a really nice collage paper based off of the scribble pattern. And so I'm just doing like random scribbles here, little circular scribbles, and then make it a line and everything's connected. So I do use a variety of colors so that when I pull the print with whatever color I might use, I can then use this paper as collage material. It makes great collage material. You can also scrape through the dried acrylic and pull out the color of the oil pastel or the crayons later. So I'm doing a little coffee cup. And with this technique, you do want to make sure you can get some variation in tone, uh, but if you want like a solid black line or solid whatever color line, um, you want to press down pretty hard or do a couple of couple of lines. Uh, these are coffee beans, because why not? I'm doing a coffee cup, might as well do a coffee bean. So the great thing about um, my work studio is that I have great light right over the table. The bad thing is that I don't have my overhead set up. So I end up cutting off um, some of the work that I've done. You'll notice that I cut off a lot of uh, stuff that I've been showing you lately. And also, because I'm using a flexible little tripod clipped to the table, uh, every time the table gets uh, hit, it vibrates. So I'm just pulling some um, really basic colors out. There's my nose. Um, these are Liquitex Basics. And I can't remember what the other brand is right now. I'm putting on, so the key for this technique is a thin, even coat. You'll see how thin it is. You can see through to the table underneath. I've got a second gel plate there to take up the excess. Peeling a corner and peeking. So I did get an okay print from this.
and I'm giving it a moment to dry. I'm using the other I'm actually I'm inking up the other plate. So that is a thing that I I do pretty often. I, you know, put my waste paint onto a second gel plate and then I just print that while I'm waiting for this to dry. And I always end up with some really great stuff. So I'm inking this in a nice teal shade. It's one of my favorite uh, Liquitex basic shades. And you can see there's way too much paint on that. The key to this transfer is patience. You gotta let that transferred image dry. Um, and then you also have to get a thin, even layer. And the key for this is that you should be able to see how you can kind of see the coffee beans through the paint. That's what you want to see. Then you have to press it down, put something stiff on top of your plate, and then uh, put some weight on it. Um, so that bar, I think, weighs about five pounds. Um, River says, uh, in a homage to Laura Comp, um, like blue dry, because I got to remind the kids about that. So this is an is a embossed line uh, that I learned from Yates Makes. So he does this thing where he embosses a line, uh, line drawing into cardstock and then uses that as a transfer. So you're going to see that in a second. Um, and it comes out pretty well. So I also embossed it into a piece of mat board. At work, we got this donation of it's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sheets of mat board. And look at that. It just like left behind a really great, 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 great line. Um, the cardboard that I used, not so great. So I'm throwing on a little bit of the extra over onto the other page. And I'm transferring that into a journal. <clears throat> And then I'm going to transfer this one onto the cover of actually one of the journals from my previous video. So transferring to an already stitched journal is a pain in the butt. Especially, so I'm working on with older 8x10 gel plates. Um, I have a, I'm going to be shooting a video about reconditioning them. I'm going to reach out to a couple of the companies and get some information from them about what they have to say about reconditioning, but I've been testing out a bunch of stuff. So look at that. Isn't that great? Um, the black turned out pretty transparent on there. Um, also, you can see the crayon transfer giving some weight to the coffee cup. Because of course, I, of course, it's, it's not a skull, it's a coffee cup in my world. Um, which my, my co-worker saw, he was like, oh, it's, it's a coffee cup. Of course it's a coffee cup. Hey, whatever. So there we go. There's that, um, pink with some black going on. So good. Love this technique. I'll put a link to the original video from Yates Makes. So you can, um, get an idea of, of some of his techniques. If you haven't watched his videos, they're fantastic. Everyone should check them out. So, um, it's like... That pink with the black is just fantastic. Here I am, I'm inking up again with the black. You also got to work fast. You can see again how thin that black line, that layer of black paint is. Now I will say um, I am less enthused about the Liquitex Basics for um, this line. Um, I think that it's a little for the for the black, the Mars Black Liquitex Basics is very transparent and not not pigmented enough. You need a better black. Um, I end up using a different black uh, later. Also, ended up and I don't know if I got it all in video because I think I ran out of space on the iPhone. Um, but I did some masking um, and stencil work along with the jelly plate with this print. Um, super stoked about how it came out. Let's 
let's see. That one didn't come out so great, but I'm going to end up printing more on top of that. So again, the thing with jelly prints is you have to be patient. Sometimes I'm not patient enough with them, and I'm trying to lift some of the paint that's left on the plate um, to get some, some of that grungy texture I love so much. Um, one of the things that I have found is helpful with the jelly plate um, is to peel the plate off instead of pulling the print off the plate. Um, so I noticed that the matte board got softer as it got wet. Um, so as the paint build up, built up a little bit, um, it kind of made those lines pretty soft. So I went back into it with the pen and scribed in there pretty hard. You could use an embossing tool for this, um, and that would actually work really, really well. Um, probably be just as smooth as this, um, but the ballpoint pen works pretty well, but it will, if you're not careful, um, you can transfer the ink into your print, so that can be a problem. So now you can see it's nice and deep. I'm going to pull that off, and yeah, I got some grungy layers of paint. So you'll notice I'm not being really good about cleaning my plate. Again, thin, 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 thin layer. Clean it off my brayer on the other plate, dropping that matte board down, pressing it down, um, flipping it over, and you'll see a ah, nice, nice crisp um, line. <clears throat> And then I'm going to pull this grungy little background. I save all these, um, or I print them into a sketchbook. Um, I'm putting some of that teal onto the other plate. And I'm using the card version of this to um, get a really, really grungy. Yeah, I'm liking that. All right, so I got that teal in the background, and now I'm going to lift it with pink, I believe. So I do a lot of color opposite stuff with um, with the gel plate. And I like when the plate kind of has those grungy edges. The key here, so I'm going to drop that in on another, yeah, it's another page. Um, I'm going to pull some of those edges off. I wish I'd put that on the cover because that ended up being a really good print. All right, here we go. I'm going to lift that with pink. That uh, pink and, and light teal together are really fantastic. And I'm going to put that on the cover of this particular journal, going over another uh, previous teal print. Clean up that edge, save that paper, print on it some more. So I save all of these papers. I save even my failed jelly prints um, because they make such fantastic collage material. Check that out. Isn't that just fantastic? Um, this is what I really like about jelly prints is that it, you can't really, you never really know what you're going to get, um, but you always get something really interesting. So I could do some masking here and I could print on it. I could collage around it. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things you could do with this stuff. Um, again, just great collage material there. And I will, I do end up printing on that again. And again, here you can see where I'm peeling the plate up from the paper instead of the other way around. I find I get better results doing this. I think it's because it stretches the plate. Um, and it also doesn't stress out the paper so the paper doesn't curl. Uh, not the world's greatest print. Um, it did lift the teal... Um, cup section. I really like this as a cover.
in person, it's pretty, pretty cool. I'm trying to get that blue line in the center area. So this is where um, these kind of beaten up gel plates cause a little bit of a problem. So paint doesn't release very well from these from these plates. Not like new plates. I mean, these from what I, from what I was told are around at least six years old, if not older than that. Um, so I am trying to recondition them. I've had some pretty big results. Um, so I'll post that video. Yeah, I end up liking this one a lot too, even though it's not, not as clear. So there's that purple. I end up using, um, can't remember, uh, buff, buff titanium. Again, so you can see that super thin layer. I'm pulling off almost all of the paint, leaving a very, very faint thing. You got to work fast here. So I'm placing that back over a previous print, and I'm pushing it down in the gutter um, near the spine area, and I'm setting it aside. So this is the hard thing for me. I have to be patient enough to set it aside and not peel it off immediately. Um, when you do these transfer techniques where you're making an image and then you're putting, you're letting it dry and you're putting another image over the top. Oh, like, look at that. It's like a grungy old poster that, you know, has been rolling around outside for, for years. Just fantastic. I love it. The crust, the grunge, the combination of the pink and the, the, the teal along with the dark blue. Just, it's fantastic. Um, but anyway, going back to it, you got to wait. Um, the longer you can wait, the better this works. Um, minimum of five minutes. It's better if you can work, you can wait 10, 15, and it's even better if you can put some weight on it. Um, so like I have, I show the cardboard and the weight. I also keep like um, a couple of old boards as well as water bottles filled with water. Um, to just weight these things down. Really happy with these sketchbooks. The paper in them is that, that B paper mixed media, so it really stands up to the gel printing. I'll see if I can find it on Amazon and link to it for you. Um, I get it from Blick for work. But I also make, like, I have the kids make their own sketchbooks out of it, so they learn how to do that modified five-hole pamphlet stitch. Um, also, I make a lot of books and give to my, my coworkers out of that stuff. That's a piece of art in and of itself. And look at the little blobby bits. It makes me so happy. So this paint is really nice. I think... Um, the environment of where you're using your jelly plate matters a lot. Um, stuff that's too fluid does not work well at, at my house. Whereas at work, the best thing I can do is, is use a, a fluid acrylic. Um, the more fluid the acrylic is, the better it seems to work. I think it's just because it's a super dry environment in my print shop. Um, you know, it's, it's got an electric heat. Um, there's this constant, um, forced air coming in through the ventilation system. So it's just very dry down there and things dry out very quickly. Um, I am going to weight this one down cause I really want it to turn out good. And then we wait and I come back and reveal it. Yeah, I really dig that. It's 
So I really like how the pink is like peeking through that orange. Um, and the orange makes that teal really pop. Now the other thing that you can do with these is you can go back into it with a paint marker and clean up some of those lines or add more lines to it. There's so much you can do. Um, super stoked with this. Very, very happy. Looks fantastic. Um, I captured a bunch of different styles of this. Um, got that jelly plate grunge that I love so much. I'm going back into it with the teal. And I'm going to lift that, I think. That's what I do. Yep. So I have these big sheets of um, printing paper. So I always flip it over so the jelly plate itself um, adds a bit of weight um, to it. But I'm peeling that away. And I've got kind of a little ghost of a coffee cup. I use that later to print on. Um, so it looks like I'm about out of time. Uh, but there you go, a gel printing session using the Yates Makes embossing and crayon and oil pastel resist. Thank you all.